So our number 11, we're looking at the relationship between how much a CEO is paid and the stock return for the company. But from our data, it shows that our correlation coefficient is only negative uh, 0.2246. So that's a value pretty close to zero. And in fact, if you look at our critical values, since there were 10 CEOs in the study, our critical value is 0.632. So if you take the absolute value of this, 0.2246 is less than our critical value, which would lead us to determine that there is no linear relationship between our two variables. If you look on page 197 of the text, it reminds you how to test for a linear relationship. And since there's no relationship between our variables, what we're going to want to use is just the average, the mean um, stock return to do our prediction. So if we jump into StatCrunch, you can do averages in Excel as well, or you can work it out by hand. Um, let's see, we want summary stats on a column. We're just going to do the stock return and find the mean. So since there was no linear relationship, we're just going to use that mean, that average stock return for all our predictions. For if we know what the CEO is paid, doesn't matter what they're paid, our prediction is going to be the same. Number 12, to truly determine if a linear model is appropriate, you need to look at the plot of the residuals. And if you look at page uh, 224 in the textbook, it starts to talk about things to look for. Uh, this graph's actually on page 225. One thing to check for is a patterned residual to see if there's a pattern. And so here's an example like a U-shaped pattern. If something like that shows up in your residual, then a linear model would not be appropriate. If there is no discernible pattern like this example here, then a linear model would probably be appropriate. Page 226 shows something else to look out for, which is called constant error variance. If your residual plot has a lot bigger spread on one end, so here as x gets larger, the residuals are a lot more spread out than when they're smaller, then again, a linear model may not be appropriate. A third thing to check for would be an outlier in your residual plot. Uh, for this example on number 12, what we're seeing is a patterned residual, a U-shaped pattern. So a linear model would not be appropriate. Number 13 is about geyser eruptions. And our explanatory variable X is the amount of time in between eruptions. Our response variable Y is that length of the next eruption. We can look at a scatter plot of our data here. And it does appear to be linear in pattern. And we would want to check the residual plot next to confirm that the relationship between these two variables is in fact linear. And I discussed this when talking through 12, but there's three things to look for. You would want to see if there's any outliers in the residual plot, and it doesn't appear that we have uh, any residuals that are really far away from the rest. You want to see if the residuals look pretty constant across the board. We want to make sure that they're not a lot bigger spread on one end and really not quite a spread on the other. And this looks pretty constant. And the third thing you want to check for is a pattern to see if there's a distinct U-shape or S-shape or V-shape, some kind of pattern in the residual. And it doesn't appear that we have uh, any pattern at all. They all seem to be hovering pretty close to zero across the board. So yes, the plot of the residuals shows no discernible pattern. A linear model is appropriate. Part B, it says that the coefficient of determination is found to be 95.5%, and we want to interpret that. If you look on page 221, it talks about the coefficient of determination. And it's basically a measurement of how well our least squares regression line is going to describe the relationship between the variables. And looking off here to the side, it says the closer it is to 1, the better the line describes how changes in the explanatory variable affect the value of the response variable. So we really want to phrase our answer to how um, 
to be about the response variable and how we can explain the response variable. So with a 95.5% and our response variable being the length of the eruption, we want to say the least squares regression equation explains 95.5% of the variation in the length of the eruption. Number 14, our explanatory variable is how far away a planet is from the star that it orbits. And then our response variable is how long it takes that planet to complete an orbit, which is called the sidereal year. So we're going to start by drawing a scatter diagram. So let me open this up in StatCrunch. So for our planets, they're numbered planet 1 through 9. We're going to do a regression, simple linear. So our, our x value here is the distance from the star. Sidereal year is the y. Let's compute. So we get our least squares regression equation. If we click the arrow at the bottom, we can see what the scatter plot would look like. And so we picked the scatter diagram there for part A. For part B, determine the correlation between distance and sidereal year. So jumping back into StatCrunch, it told us what the correlation coefficient was. It looks pretty close to 1. We got 0.9. 8888. Um, so round that up, 0 0.989. That does imply a linear relationship, something that close to 1 for our correlation coefficient implies a linear relationship. For part C, it wants us to list the least squared regression line, which we already computed in StatCrunch. Now we want to test whether a linear relationship really does exist. We're going to do that by plotting the residuals. So if we jump back into StatCrunch, it can do that for us as well. Stat, regression, simple linear. So let's start off the same way here. What we want to do is choose the option. If you scroll down, we want the residual index plot. So hit Compute on that. We get a lot of the same information, but our graph this time will show the residual. And so looking at the residuals here, we would look for outliers. We would look to see if the distance from zero is pretty constant across the board. And we also look for patterns. Here we see a pattern. It's kind of a U-shaped pattern where it's above, it dips below, it goes back up. So since there's a pattern in our residual, we would say no, we do not think the least squared regression line is a good model.